Good evening, everyone. Several weeks ago, I attended a celebration at Boston University, their school. And during the celebration, they asked the four honorees this question. They said, please reflect on the question, what will be the greatest challenge facing the church in the next decade? So there were many interesting answers. Some mentioned mass incarceration, others racism, others poverty, sexual exploitation, and other such issues. What was very interesting, though, for me was that I thought the greatest challenge facing the church wasn't mentioned. And that is the departure of people from any faith community and the increasing rise of the non-religious and the secular people, the so-called nuns and duns. Whether agnostic, atheist, or simply people who don't want to use any label to identify themselves with in the religious terms. We're seeing that there's an increasing, while the, what we're seeing that these numbers are increasing, people who don't want this term, while the prominent role of the religious communities played in our society seems to be decreasing. How will our church respond to this great challenge? How will we address the issue of an increasing number of people who are leaving our churches? Hopefully, this conference is going to address this issue. Your Eminence, Archbishop Demetrius, the chairman of our HCHC trustees, board of trustees, and our beloved spiritual father, my beloved HCHC students and colleagues, as well as all the participants of our conference. I want to give you a warm welcome. Welcome to this school, this campus, and this special next three days, and this conference. Welcome to this conference speaking to secular America, how the church is reaching out to the non-religious of our society. It's exciting to welcome everyone during these historic days of the inauguration of our 21st Hellenic College Holy Cross president. It's exciting because I know that Father Chris Metropolis, who couldn't make it tonight because he has many family members coming in and he has to welcome them for his big day tomorrow, I know that he completely agrees on the importance of this topic of secularism. In fact, we had set these dates for this conference, and months after we set the dates, the date of the inauguration came, came up. It was decided to be on October 29th, and there was talk about changing the dates of the conference to another time, not to interfere with the inauguration. But Father Chris was one who said, I would like the conference to go on the same time as the inauguration because the theme of reaching out to the non-religious, speaking to the secular world, is a theme that I want to be a part of my vision as the president for Hellenic College and Holy Cross. He will come tomorrow and offer his greeting to our conference. Anyway, before I focus on the topic of the conference, please allow me to say a few words about the Missions Institute of Orthodox Christianity, which is hosting this conference. The Mission Institute was founded in 2010 here at HCHC by the Endowment Fund of Orthodox Missions, which is a charity out of the Annunciation Church in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Since 1986, the Endowment Fund, better known as EFOM, has been sponsoring an annual missions lecture at Holy Cross during the annual Missions Week, as well as offering scholarships to students who have shown a keen interest in missionary work. The central goal of EFOM from its inception, however, was to establish a permanent presence here on campus which would promote the spirit of missions and evangelism. Thus, in the year 2010, EFOM offered $1 million to HCHC and established the Missions Institute of Orthodox Christianity. And this institute has the specific objective to promote a vibrant mission consciousness 
especially within our Orthodox Christian theological schools in the United States, with a primary focus of cultivating an understanding of international cross-cultural missionary work. The Institute also strives to encourage a vibrant understanding of evangelism in the local setting. So over the past recent years, our Mission Institute has brought to campus numerous inspiring and dynamic speakers who are engaged in cross-cultural missionary work around the globe. Father Themi Adamopoulos in Sierra Leone, Father Nicholas in Presbyterian Maryland, Andrew Child, Project Mexico, Father Andre Yiron and Father John Chakis in Guatemala, Metropolitan John of Albania, of Korcha in Albania, Bishop Elias Tume of Syria, Father Martin Ritzi of the OCMC. We've brought these speakers over the last year to talk about international missions. This year, however, we chose to divert from our usual focus on cross-cultural missions and instead address the relevant domestic theme of secularization in our country, looking at the drastic impact it is having on our churches today. I recently heard a somewhat depressing yet challenging talk by Dr. Anton Vrame at the recent Clergy Lady Congress of the Metropolis of Boston, where he gave a talk entitled, Does the Future Have a Church? Think about that. Does the future have a church? This talk offered an overview of the most recent Pew Research Center studies on the rise of the nons, those who choose to not fill out any form of religion, but to say, I'm none of the above. The changing religious demographics in our country can be a little depressing. Yet as the, yet as the Church of Christ, we can never lose hope. Archbishop Anastasius of Albania said it well when he was speaking several years ago to the European Council of Churches. Europe has dealt in a much more drastic way with the secularization of society than we have in America. And when Archbishop Anastasius was speaking to the European Council of Churches, he used these words. He said, the days of the great Christian empires are over. And now we are becoming, once again, a minority. A minority, maybe like the apostolic church. And this is the key point he said. We should never fear being the minority. As long as we are a minority inspired by God, filled with his Holy Spirit. A spirit-filled minority can change the world. Can our church be a spirit-filled church, proclaiming good news that is relevant, meaningful, and life-giving? Can we offer a message that offers new life to those who accept it? We have something that no one else in the world can offer this message of love and hope of Jesus Christ. Again, Archbishop Anastasio says it in a beautiful way. The unparalleled contribution of the church is the giving of meaning to life, the transcendence of death. No science, no computer, no technology in general can ever have something to say on this subject. I believe that what the church has to offer is the elevation of humanity through purification, from the multifaceted nature of sin to something more refined, more genuine. The goal is to advance to another level, to what we call illumination, to deification by grace, which is our ultimate yearning. It is participation in God who is love. It is a never-ending movement of limited humanity to the unlimited divine. We as the church need to make a serious self-reflection and ask ourselves if we are presenting 
the good news in this manner. Are we living and proclaiming the gospel in a way that the world around us can see and understand? Are our churches loving and welcoming communities in an age of isolated individualism? Are our churches places of inspired and vibrant worship where people can authentically encounter God and enter into his life-giving presence? Are our churches offering substantial and inspiring education, education that leads to transform lives? Do we represent people of extreme humility who are ready to serve one another in unconditional love, to wash the feet of the most marginalized and forgotten of society, and to sacrificially offer God's presence of mercy and compassion in the most concrete and practical ways? Do we as church families remember that we are called to be light, salt, yeast to the world around us, consciously going into the world and not passively waiting for the world to come to us. Too often, we've stayed in our ghetto, whether it's our ethnic ghetto or even a spiritual ghetto, our safe little bubble that separates us from the rest of the world. We betray Christ's calling to become apostles, those who are sent into the world, not of the world, but into the world, to be ambassadors and ultimately to be martyrs. Christ challenges his followers to boldly proclaim first with our lives and then with our words, the good news of salvation, the gospel of divine love, the unconquerable message of God's mercy, grace, and goodness. If we act as such communities of faith, no matter how small we may be, we will have an impact in the world around us. The growing number of non-religious and secular people will not only notice such communities, but they will even join us in our divine fellowship of love. Well, these are the issues we're going to hear about throughout this conference. We begin tonight with our beloved Archbishop, who will offer the keynote address, Beyond Secularism. Tomorrow, we will hear not only the challenging statistics from Dr. Andrew Walsh on the changing demographics of religion in America, but we'll also hear how one priest, Father Theodore Dorrance, actually left a parish of 400 families to start a mission parish with six families in one of the most secular cities in America. And today that parish is thriving. He will share with us how we can create a church that reaches out to the non-religious. Along with Father Chris Metropolis's inaugural address, which will give us a vision of how Hellenic College, Holy Cross, their students will be educated and prepared to serve the future in changing times. We will also hear from Father Stephen Freeman, the author of a blog that gets more than one million hits a year. And he will offer a talk on the God you don't believe in, conversations with the secular world. <laughs> on Friday, we will hear Dr. John Mark Reynolds offer an apology to non-believers in his talk, An Orthodox Christian Response to Atheism, while Dr. Philip Mamalakis will offer practical advice on raising children who will hold on to their faith in this secular age. And finally, on Friday, we will hear from the OCA Director of Missions and Evangelism, Father John Parker, on inspiring the apathetic and reaching out to the nuns and duns. We have a full schedule the next three days of inspiring, educational, and challenging talks. 
I thank each one of you for attending this conference. And I pray that for each one of us, our interaction with one another and with our speakers will better equip us to speak to secular America.